Use the excerpts from the pen provided below to answer each question. The following questions come from the pen by Chris Crutcher. Use the excerpt provided to answer each question. What can the reader infer based on the author's words, I'd crawl across three acres of burning hot plates on my hands and knees and nothing but Jim Schwartz to watch her hawk a loogie into a salad bar on videotape. Marilyn Waters is a serious fox. He wants to video Marilyn Hawk a loogie for his Snapchat. He doesn't want to do the play-by-play -play because he's worried his jokes won't be funny. He has a crush on Marilyn Waters and he would do anything she asked him to do. What is John suggesting by saying to his dad, how would you like a chance to really teach me a lesson? He's thankful that he will be able to pass food appropriately later in life. He's challenging his dad to wrestle him. He wishes his dad would stop teaching him how to pass food at the table. Number eight, what can you infer when John's dad responded with, you're walking on thin ice, young man? He's getting angry with John and is going to punish him if he's not careful. He's agreeing with John that he is a good point, that he has a good point. He's hoping that his dad will join him on ice in the Olympics in their weight division. What makes Johnny think that he can beat his dad if they do wrestle? The fact that he doesn't weigh two pounds more than he did in college. He runs seven miles a day, swims three miles a week, and lifts weights regularly. He's getting old and hasn't been wrestling. What can the reader infer about the training habits of Cecil B. Rivers based on the first half of this paragraph? I stand toe-to-toes with great, the great Cecil B. Rivers, one hand lightly in the crotch of his elbow, the other loosely at the back of his neck. We are mirror images. Our foreheads touch. Coach Everett stands in his starch referee shirt, arm raised and whistle ready, facing us. Dad wears his Oklahoma wrestling togs, which fit like the day he wore them last. For the past two weeks, I have heard him in the wee hours of the morning grunting out push-ups and sit-ups. And three nights ago, I woke after midnight to the rapid whop, whop, whop of his jump rope slapping against his, his study floor. He hasn't mentioned increasing his workouts. In fact, he told me he was taking a couple weeks off at the club to even things out for me. He did nearly match me push-up for push-up the other night after dinner. I, I, a, after dinner, after I told him I was writing a novel about our two cats, Huntley and Brinkley. He is taking time off to rest before the big match. He doesn't truly want to win against his son, so he isn't putting forth a lot of effort in his training. Cecil B. Rivers is training hard for the match because winning is very important to him. Based on paragraph 7, on page six, what does the narrator infer about Cecil B. Rivers? When coach's whistle ends the round, we are locked in the position in which we started. Dad slaps me playfully on the side of the head and smiles again. Playful slaps from my dad make you think you should answer the phone. Cecil B. has a joking side. His dad slapped Johnny by accident. Cecil B. never jokingly hits Johnny. He slaps him when he wants him to do something. Below in paragraph four on page seven, Johnny sees a trace of desperation in his dad. What does that likely mean? Across the mat, Coach Everett, the referee, is giving dad pointers. I hyperventilate for the rest of the minute. Walking down the side of the mat, away from my coaching brain trust, remembering dad's look. If I'm not mistaken, there was a trace of desperation. His dad was desperate for the fans to see Johnny's outstanding wrestling skills. His dad was desperate to win the match and afraid Johnny might show him up. His dad was desperate to have Johnny win the wrestling match. Below, in paragraphs 3 through 6 on page 8, Johnny asks the question, So where is my glory? What does he mean by this? Johnny was expecting to feel good about beating his dad and that his dad would respect him. Johnny was expecting to see his dad happy after beating him in the wrestling match. Johnny was waiting for a pause from the crowd. In paragraph be oh, below are paragraphs 11 through 14. What can readers infer about Cecil B. Rivers from this part of the story? Dad, I say softly. He starts swiveling the chair to face me. Tears have streaked his face. I'd give almost anything not to see this. I'm sorry. I heard you. Want me to go? No, he says, and motions me toward him. In his lap, lying open, is my old baby album. Here, decked out in his United States Marine dress blues, he holds me, staring in wonder into my infant eyes. 
There, I perch on an inner tube, a bubble pipe jutting out under his marine cap. Here, I'm draped in his Oklahoma letter jacket, sitting high atop a Navy fighter jet. Dad watches me look at the pictures. I swore it'd be different for you and me, he says. Cecil B. is upset that Johnny has spent his entire life disappointing him rather than making him happy. Cecil B. is upset because Johnny beat him at the wrestling match, or Cecil is upset because he never wanted to be the type of father that he has been for Johnny's whole life. Below, from the last paragraph of the pen, this is number 15, what part best lets you know that Dad has changed since the beginning of the story? Dad swallows hard. I'm going to write a novel, he begins, an epic novel about our two cats. Their names are Huntley and Brinkley. He is immensely uneasy but determined. Or, at the Winter Sports Award Banquet, my father stands before a crowd of athletes and their parents for the first time since he wrestled me.